From the Sega Nomad to the Nintendo Switch to the ROG Ally. Handheld gaming has come a really long way since 1995. Absolutely. It's actually exactly where I always dreamt it should be with one problem. Space, the final frontier. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you just how easy it is, I say me, Dr. Mon, to replace the solid state drive in your ROG Ally X. Now, keep in mind, this works almost exactly the same for the uh, Ally Extreme, which I also have done this in. Today, we're gonna upgrade it to a Western Digital Black 2 terabyte. So we're gonna double the storage capacity in this thing. I picked this up uh, on sale, actually, at Best Buy for a hundred bucks. A two terabyte SSD Solid state drive yeah. for, for 100 bucks. Now, this thing is upgradable to, I believe, four terabyte. We just checked the, the price on that right beforehand. Yeah, the price is astronomically high. Yeah. And, you're, and it's not like you're getting, I mean, to get double the amount of memory, <clears throat> um, you're paying a heck of a lot more. So if you were doubling the storage for double the price, say, sure, I'd pay 200 bucks for a four terabyte. I feel like a four terabytes would get you a long way, but a yep. thousand bucks? for a four terabyte, knowing damn well that next year it's probably gonna be half of that. Exactly. I'm just gonna go with a two terabyte. So just so you know, you can upgrade this thing to four terabytes and it has the SD card slot in it that you can put a one terabyte card in. So you can actually do five terabytes, but we're not gonna do it. We're just gonna go two terabytes. The procedure is exactly the same. And I would like to point out that uh, this is my new Ally X. So while I do have games installed on it, I'm really not too tied to anything that's on here. So I am gonna do a clean install. You can buy one of those little SSD enclosures and actually plug it into the USB cable and mirror your drive, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna show you the cloud utility that is already in the BIOS yep. on the LIX. So super simple procedure. Here we go, yep. step by step. First off, Dr. Mott's gonna have to solve the ROG Rubik's Cube. Yeah, this thing's kicking my ass. All right, here we go. Dun, dun. I'm just kidding. Things first, we are actually going to be uh, setting this unit down on top of our handy dandy little tool case here uh, because we don't want the, the, the joysticks to be jammed down into this. I've seen other people do it other ways, putting it on stands, but as long as you're just not grinding the joystick into the table while you unscrew this, or you just want to hold it and unscrew it, totally fine, however you want to do it. Screws? Yep. Keep in mind, one of the middle <clears throat> screws actually doesn't come out. Okay. Yes, this guy here. Uh -huh. It's got a retainer. So you're gonna use your spudger tool after you get all the screws loosened. And you're gonna start here by the triggers, it's a little easier. And you're gonna start prying it between the two halves of the console. And you'll feel the clips separate, the retainer clips. And just slowly, yeah, just keep running it along the side of the console. We're working on the sides now, using our spudger device here. And now I think it got about loosened enough to start to open. And so we're gonna to start to separate the two halves. Be very careful with that right side here. As there's you can your see, ribbon cable. There's your ribbon cable. I wanna disconnect the cable from here on the back half. So bring this clip up. Okay, bring this clip up with mm -hmm. your fingernail. And then just gently pull it down. There it is. Mm -hmm. We got the back half separated here. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna point out now that we got the back off of this thing, uh, we'll take a look at just this giant 80 watt hour battery. I mean, basically the whole bottom half of this device is a battery. And the fans are actually a lot smaller, even though uh, this device does stay a lot cooler. And there, right there, is our solid state drive. There are lots of other videos out there where folks are putting heat sinks on their new SSDs. I've chosen not to do that because this device does not have a heat sink in it now. It is a one terabyte, I'm only putting a two terabyte in there, and I don't think the device is gonna get hot enough. There is room for, for a little heat sink on the back of this, so feel free to do that if you want. I feel like it's a personal preference, but uh, if you're gonna do this, sure, put a heat sink, there's plenty of space. Um, the first thing you wanna do though when you get this thing opened up is, let's disconnect the battery, which then, is a pretty genius little. Yeah, they made it pretty easy. Just pull this little slide down, see? Pull that down and then just pull this up a little bit. Channel traction, there Boom. we go, disconnected. Now we can safely take out our solid state drive. 
One more screw to hold it. All with the same screwdriver. Okay, now that we have loosened the screw holding it, we're gonna pull gently in this direction mm -hmm. and lift it up just a tiny bit. And there we go. See how easy wiggle, that wiggle, was to wiggle. Go? There's our one terabyte drive here. All so, right, so this is the next step. That's the next step. Let's put the new guy in. We have a Western Digital Black. Uh, this is a Gen 4. Uh, so our speeds are gonna be pretty decent. I wanna say it's a 150 meg read. Uh -huh. I'm not super techie when it comes to hard drives and stuff, so don't slaughter me in the comments. I'm just here to get more space for my games and hopefully show you how to do it too. Beautiful little two terabyte drive. Very nice looking. Da, da, da. Let's put that baby in there. All right, here we go. So let's go this way. We'll line it up with its slot there. Mm -hmm. And it's nicely seated and now we'll push it down and put our screw. And as I did say, there is room underneath there for a heat sink if you so feel it necessary. And we'll tighten it down. Nice, now we're gonna reconnect our battery. Yep. So to do that, Don't forget to do this. Drop it down there and push down. Make sure it's nicely seated. And once you see that it's nicely seated, bring this little metal clip and slide it up. See, nice. All right, got that. Now we got to reconnect our ribbon cable mm -hmm. to the back case. We're going to slide it up into there here. You know. See, we got that line lined up now. Just bring that clip down. And now it's locked in place, okay? So that's our ribbon cable put back in. Very carefully line the back case back up. Keep in mind, you're going to have five leftover screws, and this middle one is retained in there. Yeah. So go ahead and push down. Oh, man, that Ooh. felt good. That, that, that felt good. That sounded good. Yeah, it did. Now it's all secured back let's put all our screws back let's we'll start with that middle one first mm -hmm. we got that middle screw put in now let's put our five remaining screws which mm -hmm. are all the same size yep. back in place long screws all set all right okay so when powering this unit on for the first time a lot of the time when you when you uh, got it all put back together it doesn't want to power on unless it's plugged in so when you do put it all back together and you go to power it on and it doesn't power on, don't freak out. Just plug it in and power it on. I highly recommend during the whole process, keeping the unit plugged in anyway, especially if you're gonna do a clean install. If you're gonna do a clean install, keep it plugged in. You don't want the battery to die when it's going through that process. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's show exactly how this thing works. So when this thing does boot back up, there it is, it's gonna boot us right into uh, the BIOS menu. So once it boots into the BIOS, you're gonna go into the advanced menu, the main menu, uh, and then you go over here to advanced. I'm just gonna use the touch screen. And you see here it says ASUS Cloud Recovery. That's what you're gonna wanna select. Uh, and it's gonna go into basically a, a clean install of Windows. It's gonna download it from the cloud. Uh, yes, agree, agree. All right, now that I've got my Wi-Fi stuff in there, you're gonna get uh, connection succeed. Just go ahead and hit okay. Cloud recovery, checking network information, connecting to the server, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna download and install Windows. Mm -hmm. Cloud recovery system is downloading files. When you get into this process, the best thing to do is just put it to the side. Depending on your internet, this could take you an hour, hour and a half to download. During that download time, Windows is going to uh, prompt you, which can be very misleading. If you sit in front of it and, and you interact with those prompts, it can foul your install up and you'll have to start over. I did this twice on the first hard drive I installed in my first one. So again, your best bet is to just let this thing run its course and come back once it's all done. You can choose to go through their cloud service upload everything to the cloud, install the new drive, and then reinstall everything from the cloud. Or shoot, you could even go as far as just mirroring uh -huh. the drive directly with, uh, this is a Windows 11 machine. So you can, you can do it with a gazillion different types uh, of, of applications or software. The other thing that uh, is, is to note on this machine is it does have, as we talked, an SD card slot. Mm -hmm. You can put one terabyte SD card in there and up to a four terabyte uh, SSD. So you can have five 
terabytes. Now the SD card's not gonna read and write as fast. So there you go. If you have, uh, if you have an Ally or an Ally X, it's as easy as that. And the hard drives are getting much less expensive these days. I got this one for a hundred bucks and it's a two terabyte. So I think uh, I'll let this thing run its course. We'll shoot a couple other videos and then I'll come back to it, show you the rest of the steps because the rest of it's basically just setting Windows up. Okay, so it's been roughly two hours since we've done the hard drive swap. Uh, I went ahead and did Cloud Recovery, which is a program that comes pre-installed on the Ally. It allows you to pull all of your information down from the cloud. So it took about an hour to uh, download and update Windows and put all my settings back to where they were. And now I'm on my merry way uh, downloading all of the games that I wanna play. And let's check it out, come here. Okay, so if we go ahead and go into system storage, you can see I now have uh, 1.81 terabytes, which is a two terabyte hard drive installed on this thing. And you can see that I've already used up almost 580 gigs of it downloading games I want, but I still have one and a quarter terabyte free, which is fantastic because one of the games that I've been wanting to install on this, but I didn't due to space, was the Tony Hawk one and two remake, you know, because we just got the announcement of three and four and I'm really excited to go back and play through some of those again. Now, all in all, this hard drive swap physically, as you see, took about 15 minutes, if you know what you're doing. Uh, and once you've got it all installed, you put it back together. Running the cloud recovery suite that comes on the Ally X or the Ally is super simple. In fact, you can, you can take and upload all of your games and everything else to the cloud if you want, and then just reinstall it all. And now I have two terabytes to play with. I probably would prefer four terabytes. If you go online, you can see other people installing four, four terabyte drives on these things. It will support it. But a four terabyte drive is just ungodly expensive for these things. The two terabyte, like I said, it was about a hundred bucks on sale at Best Buy. So I'm still finding it incredibly crazy that we live in a day and age where my handheld games, all of these things that I enjoyed as a kid are now fully up to spec with that of a new console. I think technology is at a really incredible place and it's only going to continue to get better. So in order to stay up to date on videos like this one in the future, click that little subscribe button right here and get that little bell icon so you can be notified when they do drop in the future. And until next time, enjoy the journey.